Welcome to another episode of Follow the Brand. I am your host, Grant McGaw, CEO of Five Star BDM, a five star personal branding and business development company. I want to take you on a journey that takes another deep dive into the world of personal branding and business development using compelling personal story, business conversations, and tips to improve your personal brand. By listening to the Follow the Brand podcast series, you will be able to differentiate yourself from the competition and allow you to build trust with prospective clients and employers. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Make it one that will set you apart, build trust, and reflect who you are. Developing your five-star personal brand is a great way to demonstrate your skills and knowledge. If you have any questions for me or my guests, please email me at grant.magaw, spelled M-C-G-A-U-G-H, at 5 Star BDM, B for brand, D for development, M for masters.com. Now let's begin with our next five-star episode on Follow the Brand. Hello, I am Grant McGaw, CEO of 5 Star BDM and host of the Follow the Brand podcast, where we help you to build a five-star brand that people will follow. Get ready to meet a marketing visionary in the digital realm. Today, we shine the spotlight on Dr. T.L. Holmes, a true luminary in the world of marketing and personal branding. Dr. T.L. Holmes' journey is nothing short of remarkable. From humble beginnings to becoming a marketing trailblazer, he's a force to be reckoned with. With over two decades of experience, T.L. Holmes is not just a marketing guru. He's a mentor, an innovator, and a source of inspiration for aspiring marketers and entrepreneurs. But what makes T.L. Holmes truly exceptional is his ability to adapt and thrive even in challenging times. The pandemic for him became a turning point, a catalyst that fueled his passion for personal branding and marketing. Underneath Dr. T.L. Holmes' success, lies a simple yet profound philosophy. Prepare, practice, and present. It's a mantra that has propelled him to new heights and one he's eager to share with the world. But Dr. T.L. Holmes' journey would not be complete without acknowledging the influencers who shaped his path. John D.C. Cody, a titan in the radio industry, played a pivotal role in mentoring and shaping T.L.'s marketing philosophy. Today, Dr. T.L. Holmes stands as a testament to the power of personal branding and digital marketing. He's a firm believer in the importance of visibility and crafting an authentic brand voice. So, Get ready for a captivating conversation as we dwell into the world of personal branding and marketing excellence with Dr. T.L. Home. His insights and experiences are bound to inspire and empower. Let's give a warm welcome to Dr. T.L. Home on the Follow Brand Podcast, where we are building a five-star brand that you can follow. Welcome, everybody, to the Follow the Brand podcast. We're going to take this one all the way up to the Big Apple into New York. We're going to talk to my main man, T.L. Holmes. I've been watching him from afar. I like his style. I like his story. I like what he brings to the table and the knowledge that he has, especially in this digital realm. And we have got to come up to speed as quickly as possible as a culture to make sure that we take full advantage of what we have at our disposal. Because I truly believe this is a game changer. And the more that we become more comfortable with it, the more that we adapt to it, we can really make some impact here as we go forward. So, Dr. T.L. Holmes, would you like to introduce yourself? 
<laughs> well, listen, man, I am, I kind of such a privilege and an honor to be on with you, my man. Um, I appreciate everything that you do to the industry and to this whole marketing world that we all live in. Um, and so I just, you know, thank you for having me um, here on your podcast. Well, absolutely. You know, this is the Brand Masters season. And I've had a number of different people on the show this season. And we really want to use this as a platform, a platform to let people understand and know about what, what's happening in this realm because it's rapidly changing. So before we do that, we want to know about you because Follow the Brand is about your personal brand. And if you can start by just sharing a bit about your your journey, you know, your early challenges you faced and things that have shaped your outlook on life and business to get us going. Well, yes. Um, well, I started my whole marketing journey, um, I would say, in uh, 2005. Before um, 2005, I was working with a uh, music industry marketing firm um, called Moses Media um, Incorporated in Florida. And Florida's where I'm from, <laughs> I'm from Gainesville, Florida. And I um, was working with Moses Media um, under the tutelage of Don D.C. Cody. Um, and he's one of the matriarchs in this whole radio industry, music industry, um, that has um, blazed the path for so many individuals. But I was fortunate to work with him um, in building um, his company, Moses Media, in its early stages. And um, he fired me. <laughs> he fired me. Um, it, it was it was unique because I had closed a, a client, and we were doing radio promotions and stuff of that nature. And this client wanted everything because we had done such a great job with this single, uh, with this artist single. I did not know that who I was working with owned the label, right? And so he called and he asked to talk to me, and we talked, and um, he said, "Well, listen." Um, we want everything. You guys have done a wonderful job with um, my artist single, and but we need everything. We need the whole package. Now, my mark, my experience um, before going to Moses Media, I was marketing director um, at the University of Florida Gator Sport Clubs, and um, and so that's where my background was. Um, and with Moses Media, I was more into sales and um, radio um, marketing. Uh, putting records on the radio. And so with that, um, I went to uh, Don Cody and he was like, well, listen, close the deal. I closed the deal. Um, it was a lot of money. <laughs> it was a lot of money and uh, closer up toward, you know, six figures. And uh, he said, okay, close the door, come off, close the door, close the door. And he said, okay, I'm, re I'm releasing you from the company. Wow. I I didn't have a clue what just happened, right? <laughs> and so he's like, "Listen, I run a I run a radio marketing company. Uh, we put records on the radio. I work records to radio. That's all I want to do. Your your background is in marketing, so this is what you do. I do the radio. You do the marketing. You start your own marketing company." Take this client um, and, you know, do what you say you're going to do. Stay out of people's bed <laughs> and, and provide the service. So I was like, okay. And so he called his lawyer. I incorporated my first marketing company, uh, which was Media Concept. And so then the rest was history. I um, He wrote me a check which is my percentage of the deal. And I moved to New Jersey. <laughs> um, that's how I wound up in, 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 up north. And, and so my, my journey has been, you know, starting to work with artists, um, mark packaging them um, and building their brand. And so that's what I've been doing since um, 05. It wasn't until um, the pandemic hit Actually, right before the pandemic, um, 
I had an awakening because, you know, all the marketing things I've done, the, the logos I've designed, the website we put to place, uh, the uh, marketing campaigns we've done, the commercials we've produced, has always been for somebody else. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a real sharp turn here, but we're going to go somewhere, I promise. Yeah. It's always been for somebody else. And, and I realized that I hadn't birthed anything in the earth that was yeah. mine. And so it was a real, real awakening. And, you know, what it did was it started a journey for me getting from where I was and it thrust me into my purpose which is the journey that I've been on. I, I wrote my first book uh, called Unidentified, um, Unlocking the Power of Your Brand. And so the unique thing about that, it was, it, was a, it was a birthing piece for me because the hardest thing was to do was to give birth to my personal brand. Now, I can give birth to your brand. I can help you. You know, give birth to your 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 idea, your goal, your strat your strategy, and you know, I've always been gifted with putting people people's vision. But when it came to mine, it was a struggle. It was a struggle, and so I had to, you know, put some elbow grease into it, and we worked it. Like it, it, it was a lot of work, and I think, you know, for anyone that birthing a brand, um, you have to do the work. Right. Um, I have three principles that I teach when it comes to this whole marketing thing, and that's um, prepare, package, and present. And a lot of times we get in trouble because we start packaging something that's not prepared. Right. And we present something that's not packaged properly. And so when you do the work and you really dig deep into who you are as a person before you are a brand you got to be a person you have to connect with who you are right and that's what i do with a lot of my clients you know a lot of clients will say listen i need a logo why why why, why do you need a logo um well i'm going to promote my company why why are you promoting your company what is the purpose behind you doing all that now we can design the heck out of anything right um, but what I understand when you are developing a brand, the brand needs to be true to you before it can be true to somebody else. And yeah. so that's one of the things that I've concentrated on. I know a lot of people listen to us right now, um, but I want to implore you to make sure before you let the world know who you are, that you know who you are. Mm-hmm. I'm going to that one more time. Before that the world know who you are, you know who you are. You spend time with yourself. You dig deep and figure out what is the purpose of your brand, right? Not that you package your brand and present your brand to the world, but what is the purpose that you are presenting your brand? Why are you presenting your brand to the world? What is the why? What is the ingredient that make you special or different from the next person that is doing the exact same thing, right? Um, so so it, it, it's the difference between going to McDonald's and Burger King. They both sell hamburgers. They both sell hamburgers. That but is one so- is branded a different way than the other one, right? And so, you know, and, 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 and so what you have to do is you have to make sure that what you are doing is true to you. Um, and then once it's true to you, once you are engulfed into what it is, your world, then you present it to, 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 to others. I 100% agree with everything you just said. This is the common mistake that I see in SMB enterprises and solopreneurs entrepreneurs, somebody they have an idea, they rush to you know building a brand asset, an asset basically, something that's aesthetic, right? Something that is visually seen. But you have not done your research. You have not done anything around your identity, nothing around your research. Do you even know where 
you're going to be, you know, strategically located. And, and that's a lot of the flow. It's not just a geographical location. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's where you set in relation to your competition. Have you even thought through those things? And typically I have that, you know, yeah. I'll have a you know, short discussion with clients and they begin like, oh, wow. Like, yeah. So when you're doing a brand strategy with a Dr. TJ Holmes or a Grant McGall, you know, you're going to have to do some work. You don't, you don't, you don't just go into an AI engine and come out with a brand like, whoop, it's ready to go. That's it. Like, no, nah. no, you'll get something very bland, very two dimensional. It'll have some buzzwords and some keywords and whatnot, but it will not stand very long as you engage with the audience who really is what your brand is for. You know, what is, what is, what is your business for? What, what purpose are you serving you know, with your product, service, whatever it might be? I like how you said that you had to, and this has happened, happens a lot. You had to go in and find your brand. You had to step back, drop the pencil, drop the mouse, drop everything like, wow. Absolutely. Dr. T, you know, who am I as, as, as home? Yeah. What do I represent? Yeah. And, then, and then you found that. Now you started writing books. You started to be, maybe you say, you know what? I'm a teacher. I have, I have something to gift to the world that from my unique perspective and vision and experience that I'm going to bring to, to uh, my audience so they have a better opportunity than possibly I had. Now, you said you grew up in Florida. Sounds like you got your start even in the music industry. I heard you've had some stats with BET, these kinds of things, these marketing strategies. How yeah. was all of this yeah. shape who you are right now? Well, again, the wonderful opportunities I've had in, in running my marketing firm is um, working with a lot of influential people, um, a lot of artists. Um, and we I actually started, um, I was challenged um, by a pastor, and he asked me, um, are you able to do what you've done with high trivet? Are you able to do that with me as a pastor? I was like, "What do you What do you mean? You sing? Um, what What are you What are you What are you What are you, what are you are look, What are you looking for exactly?" And he was like, "Listen, I want you to take my 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 pastoring and my messages and build a brand." I was like, "Okay, I, I like the challenge. I'll meet you at that challenge." <laughs> And we did, we did just that actually, it, um, and it revolutionized the entire his entire ministry, and catapulted him into a seven, seven figure ministry. This was a personal ministry um, that that he had that we were able to, to take his his theories and make them intellectual property, right? Um, package them, and at that at that, that time, you, DVDs was 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 real big. And so you're know, duplicating the DVDs and you know creating the whole media ministries and, and stuff of that nature. So we did that um, for him, and uh, we did a wonderful job. And I'm not saying that just because it was us. I'm saying it because it was a wonderful job. We created a system, right? And one of the things that that was important to me was to put something in place that's duplicatable, regardless of who's doing it. That it's duplicatable. Well, there's a, a manual, there is a process and procedures um, that we built for the media ministry. And we took his brand and basically catapulted it. Um, one of the key things that, you know, we started was the imaging. I, I, well, number one, I wanted, I wanted to make sure he could preach. All right. <laughs> and so he looked at me real crazy when I asked him, I said, listen, I have no problem in packaging and presenting to the world, but can you preach? This episode is brought to you by Five Star BDM. Five Star BDM is a professional consulting and advisory group keenly focused on business development services for small to mid-sized businesses and entrepreneurs. Although every business is unique, they often share challenges that can be addressed through smart branding. Services include process improvement and operations, digital strategy and transformation, business intelligence, digital marketing, and personal branding. Our five-star business and personal branding company 
has helped a number of professionals and organizations to optimize and grow. The result is more business, more opportunities, better reach, positive outcomes. Please visit www.5starbdm.com to learn more and view all the episodes of Follow the Brand. Because I'm going to do my job. The right. problem comes when I present you to the world and you sound like you need to be on the backside of McDonald's. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, and that's important in your preparation. You have to be ready for the mountain because you cannot go to the mountaintop and expect people not to see you. Let me right. explain something, guys. If you're going to present your brand, you have to make sure that you are brand worthy. Everybody can't be on the front. Somebody got to be in the back. Somebody got to be the number two. Everybody can't be a number one. They can't. Because if, if we had a bunch of number ones, there'll be no followers. <laughs> exactly. And so you have to understand how to know what you are doing. Polish that. Get the education you need. Get the skill that you need. Become the expert in your field. Write the book. Create the training. Um, do the work. And it took me years to do the work on me before I could talk about anything else. Regardless of everything I've done for other people, that was for their vision, not my vision. Right? And so it's a different ball of wax when you're dealing with something that's your baby. You 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 take care of your baby differently than you take care of somebody else's baby. And so when it came to to me building that for me, um, you know, it was it was it was it was different. It was different because I was able to take the pastor's brand and and, and package him and present him to the world and we were doing, you know, six different series a year. For him, you know, we're, we're, we're re redecorate the whole lobby. We'll, you know, do all of his, you know, promos, videos, and um, graphics, and everything matched. He, he did one, um, one series, um, and we had a bunch of um, the um, tape that the NYPD, they, the yellow tape. Um, yeah. I, I forget what the name of the series was, but that was the brand for that concept. And so everything was 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 taped off. Like people walk into the church, like we're we had a crime scene or something. And <laughs> and but it was it was to promote the the, the series. Um, and so it was it was a wonderful experience. And one of the things I learned is how to do everything you're doing. Do it in a spirit of excellence. So I tell people your brand starts with your your identity. Your identity starts with your image. You have to understand that people are looking at you, and you have to let, make sure you don't look like a fool. You have to take the right pictures, get with a photographer, a professional photographer, because this is a one-shot deal. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Exactly. Do the work. Take real pictures. Don't be putting no selfies out there. I'm talking about this is my book cover. No, it's not. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Don't do, and, and and when you're putting out flyers, do real flyers. Find a graphic artist. We're so busy trying to save money to where we lose money. Mm -hmm. Um so so do the works, build the team. If you're not proficient in designing flyers, don't say, Well, I can do this. No, no. Even if you could, don't focus on that one thing. And I tell people all the time, if you're a cook, you should not cook on all four eyes at the same time. Exactly. Why? Because you're cooking something different on each eye. Nobody cooks the same thing in each pot, right? If they're cooking on four eyes. And if you're cooking on the four eyes, you cannot give more than 25% of attention to each pot. And so what you do is you get all the pots off the stove. Focus on that one pot. And whatever goes in that pot that makes sense, you do it. If it don't go in a pot, it don't fit. You can't be a doctor during the day and a, and a police man at night. No. Why? 
You cannot divide yourself. When you are identifying your brand, you want to find out what it is that you are good and not good, just good, but you are great at doing. And a lot of times people walk into purpose and not understanding that you've been living in purpose your whole life, even when you was a child. You know what I'm saying? Um, you, 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 you are doing some of the things that you, that you are, are, are doing now, even, even when you were a teenager, that's what they call walking in purpose, right? We just don't identify that purpose until we get older and that's fine. You got to go through life and I, I, I get it, but you, at some point you got to pull all those experiences together so that you can have one major impact and you leave a legacy while you're walking in purpose. Well, what you, know, you just so that, said that, there that is so really important. important. All of that is so, so important because when we were growing up, and I'm going to assume you're my similar age group, especially when you uh-huh, mentioned okay. things like DVDs, sets, things of that nature, uh-huh, uh-huh. is that it's uh-huh. so much easier now to brand yourself as before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to be in the radio station, get your music played, you'd have to have a TV, you know, a TV station to broadcast. You can do all this streaming. However, what you said is so important because how you stand up, present yourself is very, very important. And in the age of social media, where in a click, you know, of uh, of your finger, you're out just demonstrating yourself to the world. So, what are you demonstrating? What are you showing up and presenting? as your true self. It doesn't always mean you have to be presenting the career track or a business track, but you have to say, you know what, this is who I am. And am I on brand or am I off brand? And yeah. understanding what is private and what is public information, right? Absolutely. And visibility. Absolutely. The thing that I've noticed is that Lots of people, they do hide behind the camera when it comes to business relationships. They're not showing up and demonstrating their expertise, their knowledge, and their wisdom on social profiles or platforms like a LinkedIn and so forth. And I don't know if that is because they're just not comfortable with the tech, they, they don't want, they just... They're a little shy. They don't understand how this is a platform and a banner and a billboard that you can mm-hmm. utilize mm-hmm. for your own expertise and and to to and I love your story and how you said you know you sold this wonderful deal and you brought it back and because you really were outside of scope for for them but you were in scope for you. He's like, look, you're, you're, you're your own business. We're going to let you run with this. Cause this is what I do. Yeah. This is what you do. And then you yeah. were able to, to run with that, but being able to demonstrate who you are and your expertise is so relevant today. Talk to us about helping us be more visible and why that's so important. Um, well, first thing in, in, in wanting to be more visible, you got to know, where your visibility needs to be. And so you have to identify who your target audience is. Um, identifying your target audience means um, those people that will take to what it is you're offering. So case in point, if I'm selling collard greens, right? I don't want to sell collard greens in a t- potato field. Why? Because people that's coming to the potato field want potatoes, not collard greens. Um, so you have to make sure that whatever um, whatever you are uh, doing, uh, you have to uh, figure out how to identify your target market and how to identify who is your ideal client in their target market. Um, so once you identify that, then that's when you put together your your marketing uh, uh, element that's going to impact that target that target demographic. Uh, one of the, one of the main things is finding out uh, what is the need analysis 
toward the individuals that you're trying to impact. Uh, what do, what are they looking for? How how are they uh, more likely to respond? Uh, what medium are they more likely to respond in? Are they more likely to respond to emails, text messages, um, video, audio, um, stuff of that nature? Um, you want to also make sure that you are efficient in um, in making sure that you can impact them in a way that they can do a assessment, but to do a survey of what they are looking for. Um, once you get all that out of the way, and that's what we call preparation, right? We talked about that earlier. Yeah. Um, we talked about preparation. Then we talked about packaging. Um, packaging uh, that yourself. Uh, and and then you want to present that you want to present yourself to the world. Um, then depending on how you what service you're offering, what um, product you're offering, it's going to dictate how you package yourself and present yourself. All of that's important, and we need to truly time in. I want to go back to what you even said earlier. You may be an expert in what you're doing. Say you're an executive. Let's say you're a professional. Let's say you're a um, someone that wants to start a business, you're good at that. What you just said there is where you where you shine at in, in the marketing space, in the branding space. And then you begin to realize, okay, I kind of know about these things, but I'm not I'm not an expert in that world. I'd be like, you know what? I I know about you no know, making you no know, ZD, let's just say as a dish for something to eat, but I've never made it before. So there's two different things. So you might want to go to somebody that knows how to create that kind of experience and then make it relevant for yourself and then repeatable for yourself and that it makes sure that you're, you have the right platform. Also, I want the audience to take note of what you talked about in your pastor experience. He knew how to preach. You didn't know it at the time, but then he showed you, all right, I see where you're at because you're, he has, you have to fit that branding and marketing with the personality to give your a brand a personality, give it a brand voice. All of those things are so, so important. And all of those things create the imagery, the, the color scheme, the fonts, and all these other things we associate with branding, marketing, promoting, and all of those other things. So I like how you highlighted all those different things. The other thing I want to talk about, which you are an expert at, is what we call, once you like to say you develop your brand, you've got to get into what we call what's real marketing. Marketing is promoting. How do you get out there and get noticed? How do you put yourself in front of your target audience for them to take action? That's what you want. You want some reciprocal action to take place, right? And in, in, in the digital realm, we hear about these things called SEO or SEM and all these terms that if you're not in that realm, you're like, what is that? And you could possibly take it, be taken advantage of. You don't understand the digital landscape. Talk to us a little bit more about that. So I'm going to explain it this way. The best way to bake a cake is understanding the ingredients. Right. Um, and so what I'm going to tell people or tell you and your audience is, um, there are elements that make SEO work. SEO don't work just because it's SEO. Um, SEO works in this textual context. You have hashtags, you have keywords, hashtags and keywords operate as triggers. Triggers for SEO. We search websites on the what? The World Wide What? The World Wide Web, the internet. Exactly. So the World Wide Web is is strategic in its in its naming because search engine optimization works like a web does. When something hits the web, what the first thing that happens? The web shakes. The web calls movement. The shaking of that movement or and that movement um, actually triggers the spider. 
the only purpose for a web is to trigger attention. And so when you put hashtags, certain hashtags, and you put certain keywords into search engines, it sends out certain triggers. It sends out certain um, pings. And so what happens with Google or Yahoo or whatever your favorite search engine um, might be, um, it responds to that particular trigger. So if I'm looking for a black pot, it's not going to send me um, to white pot. It's going to send me a whole lot of images. It's going to send me a whole lot of links to find black pot. The only way I get to my destination is based off of what instruction or what information I feed it. It's the same thing with AI. AI does not respond to you based off of it just being AI. AI responds to what you feed it. So you can't ask AI, you know, something and expect it to give you something else. Um, and you're only you're only able to uh, get the response based off of your action. Um, so that's number one. Number two, um, I would veer to say um, the the ability to um, beef up your your response or what you get from um, AI is, um, or even search engine optimization, is how well versed your ask is. Um, so we have developed software um, that help you uh, get to the first page, first and second page of search engine. Um, but just that, it, it enhances what you already have. What you want to make sure when it comes to maximize um, maximize a search engine is that you have keywords that identifies your site uh, in addition to um, the information that you have. You want to put keywords, embed keywords into your content, and you want to embed it on the pages that you want people to go to. So if you um, are a sports company that sells socks, um, you want to put that information in your home page when you when you're on the page that says about us because that's the page you want people to go to. So you want to mention I have socks, or you even see some um, websites get tricky and they put I have hashtag socks. Why? Because that's an indicator, right? Um, that's a that's a trigger um, that allows for when somebody looks for socks. They're going to go to what um, the, the page that has hashtag sock. Then they'll go to the page that has the keyword sock. Am I making sense? Oh, no, you make um, perfect sense. Understanding the machine language you know, from absolutely. the human perspective, when you understand how the machine works and then why mm -hmm. you do certain things. So, again, what you're talking about, having that uh, attraction, the magnetism to bring you know, the audience directly to where you want to be as an entrepreneur. You want people that are looking for your particular product or service to be able to find you, you know, because there's a lot of you, information. Yeah, and when you have your webmaster or the person that's designing your, your site, the third thing you want to do is make sure they tag it properly. They want to tag every single page, and you want to tag every single image on your pages. So if you have a picture of yourself, you want to tag that picture and identify that picture. Uh, one of the things that we started doing when we were developing our software um, is we uh, actually we were developing or creating the SEO training um, course. We identified where the government was um, um, referencing companies that made sure that their websites were in compliance. And and um a I don't want to say it, um an incentive to make your website compliant was um their agreement that they have with Google to put all compliance websites at the top of the searches. And so what we did <laughs> as a company, you know, uh, forecasting 
is we develop our own brand of ADA compliance software. Um, that's called an Nexus ADA. So when we talk about what we're moving forward to, um, that's launching um, that particular um, software brand, um, which is a Nexus ADA. And um, you can check it out at nexusada.com. But also, you um, one of the things that we have done is uh, we we've made it available um, to to companies, but we also have um, about 22 other um, software uh, licenses that we own um, that we're going to be deploying um, to the public very soon. Yeah, that is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We got to get to that because we got to be compliant and understanding of disability, things that make you stand out. It seems like you have definitely focused on that. Now, when you say keywords, people have gotten that. Understand hashtags, they've gotten that. They might not understand metadata. There's metadata mm-hmm. on these sites that take into account all these things. There's additional descriptions. Help us understand metadata. So, um, metadata basically describes the content that's in um, your pages specifically. Um, so the, this is now we're talking tech stuff. So people that say, I want to, you know, design my own website. I'm going to save money. Well, yeah, you may save money, but you may not know what you're doing. Right. <laughs> um, so, so, you know, you wonder why people are not coming to your sites because it's not tagged. It's not encoded properly. So a webmaster that does coding would have went to school, would have had learned that information and know, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do on the back end. Um, put the, the metadata in, which is your your long tail um, data, your short tail data. Um, you know, so when you have your short tail data, those are one word um, synthesis, synthesis. Um, like so, cat, um, maybe two words, um, green dog. Um, big rabbit, you know, stuff like that. But when you have your long tail um, meta, meta, metadata, you want to have like a sentence without any spaces. So, you know, that's basically how you um, guarantee that people come to your site when they're looking for a specific thing. Um, long tail um, meta, metadata is very important because it's going to drive the right target um, traffic to your site. Um, a lot of times, um, people have people that, that come to their site. Yes, they're, they, they're your target audience, but they may not be, be your ideal client, right? Um, and so you want to do work with as many of your ideal clients as possible. And that's in how you encode your website. So when someone is looking for something specifically that you offer, they can come to you um, and you will be referred to them at the top or the first page of Google based off of how you have your website encoded. Um, and that's one of the things that we love about um, the ADA software. And, and, and just to clarify, ADA stands for Americans with Disability Act. Um, the compliance with the government, um, making sure that your website is ADA compliant, um, it, it tags itself to your meta, metadata um, to make sure that when you are, when someone is searching for your content, it attaches itself to that data so that you come up on the first or second page of Google. This is great information. This has been a great episode talking to you. And I, I think you just told us your website, but tell us again. We want people to know how to contact you, you personally. And also, if you've got anything coming up, that um, the audience should be aware of so they can tune in and get more information about what, what's, what's going on with Dr. Holmes. Absolutely. Um, well, I can be followed on all social media at Dr. T.L. Holmes online. That's D-R-T-L-H-O-L-M-E-S online. And I can also, um, the website that we um, have launched our software on is a next ADA.com. That's A N E X U S A D A dot com. And I can, you know, please reach out to me. Let me know that you have listened to me and heard me on this 
um, podcast. And I also have um, September um, the 6th. I'm actually a speaker at Blacks and Technology um, Conference in Nashville um, that's coming up. Um, it's a big, 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 big deal. Um, they have some amazing speakers. They have some amazing sponsors. And we'll get you that information so you can put that out there as well. Um, so it's a great, wonderful organization. It has 25,000 members. Um, so anyone, any minority um, that's part of the technology world, um, we would love to have you on board. Um, so listen, man, thank you again, um, Mr. Grant, for allowing me to partake with you and break bread with you on your podcast. Oh, with, without question. It would be a complete podcast season without having the brand master himself, Dr. T.O. Holmes, on the mic, giving us some knowledge, just dropping keys. I'm like, bam, bam, we're, we're learning. I love this. I love the people at BIT uh, uh, as well. I know a lot of people at BIT in uh, Orlando, uh, California. You know, this is great. And that's what you know, I say BIT, but that's blocks and technology. So that is yes, wonderful. Yes, and we, we're going to get this information out there. The more information we have, the more knowledge that we have, the more we can share our wisdom. So I really, really appreciate you being on the Follow Brand Podcast. Your entire audience can tune into all the episodes of the Follow Brand. At, and that is five star S T A R B D M. That's B for brand, B for development, and for masters.com. This has been special. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you.